Hi everyone, today we will see section 6 of Hindu Subsection Act 1956. Already we have seen many provisions. Section 6 mainly deals with copartionary property. Suppose a person has interest in the copartionary property, what will happen to the property after his death? That's what we are going to see in section 6. Before directly going into the provisions, we need to understand what is meant by copartionary property and some basic theories and concepts present to it so that it will help you to understand better. Let's get the session started. The joint family of Hindu law is an institution. It is peculiar to Hindu society. It consists of male, his wife and unmarried daughters and his male lineage descendants, their wives and unmarried daughters. Thus, it is a kind of patriarchal in character. Inside this joint family, there is what is called the copartionary. So, the copartners or the owners of the joint family property, they have common interest and common possession. They also have the right of partition, which we used to call as Daya heritage. So, the copartionary consists of a common ancestor and three degrees of male lineal descendants. Under section 6.1 of Hindu Section Act, Amendment Act 2005, a daughter is made as a co-partner. So what is exactly the co property? Property inherited by a person from his father or father's father or father's father's father or property allotted at a partition in his ancestral property. In this property, his own son, son's son or son, son's son acquires an interest by birth as co rights. This is called co property. It includes ancestral property, acquisition made by co with the help of ancestral property, joint acquisition of the co and separate property of the co thrown into common stock. With respect to section 6, this is all, this is what all about co property. So, in the next session, I will try to put very detailed thing about co property and different case laws on the same. Now, let's see what are the changes made after 2005 amendment. So, here the co interest of brother 2 will not go to brother 1, instead it will go to his wife because she belongs to class 1 female higher. In this picture, I have shown only his wife. Suppose if brother 2 has mother or daughter or pre-diseased daughter's son, even the copartionary property of brother 2 will be shared by them. That is mother or daughter or pre-diseased daughter's son will share that copartionary interest. The copartionary interest no more goes to brother 1 based on survivorship. It will go to even the female hires who belongs to class 1 schedule of the act. The next concept which we need to understand is about notional partition. So, you know notion is, a, is like assumption. Why we need to assume the partition? Because the share which here in this case male A is an interstate who has interest in the co property. The share which he would get at notional partition is what would devolve under this act. So, the, how the co interest of A is to be calculated for the purpose of devolution under the act is stated in explanation to the proviso. So, what is meant by notional partition is the family is deemed to have been partitioned immediately before the death of A. So, before the death of A, the family is considered to have been partitioned. This is just an assumption. Okay. Based on the assumption, the not notional partition taken place and the share which the male A gets at the notional partition is the share which will be devolved under this act. So, the theory of notional partition is a very important concept because based on this theory only, we are going to calculate the diseased owner's co interest. So, this would be clear from the decision of the Supreme Court in Gurupath versus Hirabai case. The facts of this case I will try to explain in the animation. In this case, there is a male A who died in 1960, left 
by Hirabai, who is his wife, and they have two sons. Yes, one. One of the son is Gurapath. That is one of the parties to the suit. Yes, two. And three daughters, D1, D2, and D3. So the notional partition is the partition we are assuming that had taken place before the death of Ye. So what happens is this Hirabai, she claims her share in the ancestral property left by her husband Ye, who died in 1960, leaving behind his widow Hirabai, two sons and three daughters. So the Supreme Court, what happened is, the Supreme Court has held that under section 6 at the notional partition between Ye and his two sons, as mother, she was also eligible for allotment of a share. So she would get at the notional partition. So totally four people, male A, Hirabai, S1 and S2. Since Supreme Court held that even Hirabai is entitled to get the share at the notional partition. She will also come under the share at the notional partition. So 1 by 4 because 4 people. So the share of male A that is copassionary interest of male A is 1 by 4. This 1 by 4 share only will be devolved after the death of A. So what happens is so this 1 by 4 share is notional partition share. This we will keep it aside. Next is this 1 by 4 share of male A will be devolved to the people after his death. Who and all will come? Wife, two sons and three daughters. So totally six people. So 1 by 4 will be shared by wife, daughters and son. So what happens is 1 by 4 share of A divided by 6 is 1 by 24. 1 by 4 by 6 is 1 by 24. So wife will get 1 by 24. Two sons each will get 1 by 24 and three daughters each will get 1 by 24. So in addition to 1 by 24, already wife has notional partition share 1 by 4. So 1 by 24 plus 1 by 4 is 7 by 24. Similarly, even sons will get addition to the copassionary interest share. They got 1 by 4 notional partition share. So totally 7 by 24. So this 7 by 24 will be given to wife son 1 and son 2. They each will get 7 by 24 and daughter 1, daughter 2, daughter 3 will get 1 by 24. So totally if you calculate it will come to unity. So this is how the notional partition works. After the decision of this Gurapath versus Kirapai case, there are even some rejected views also about this notional partition. That is, uh, even though it is a notional partition and not actual partition, Hirabai gets no share in her own right. And one more view is like, since the partition is notional, the mother also counts for one share in the ancestral property. However, no share should be actually allocated to her as it is only a notional partition. But this view has been made erroneous and the Supreme Court observes that the notional partition has to be treated and accepted as a concrete reality, something that cannot be recalled in the case Rajrani versus Chief Settlement Commission, Delhi. Thank you. This is a very important concept to understand section 6 because this has been given in the explanation to the provision. So, if you have any doubts, please do please do ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.